it's your girl, Amira Banks with Black Tree TV. Remember, it was a whole new world with Disney's Aladdin? Well, it's a whole new day with Disney's The Princess and the Frog, featuring the first ever African-American princess. We'll have celebrity interviews, including the voice of Anika Noni Rose, starring as Princess Tiana. So don't go anywhere. We have all you need at Black Tree TV. All right, we're standing here with Neo. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing great. So now you sing one of the songs on the soundtrack. Yes, yes. The, uh, the end credit song is entitled Never Knew I Needed. And what is that song about? Um, it's basically about two people who uh, feel like they know what they want, feel like they know what they need in life, and uh, realize through meeting each other that they don't know what they need, that they have no idea, and um, the realization becomes that what they need is love, and they find that with each other. And what was the inspiration behind this song? Um, well, they, they showed me bits, I haven't seen the whole movie yet, they showed me bits and pieces of it so that I could, you know, grasp pretty much what the underlying tone of the story is, and that's, that's pretty much what it is. We're here with Bruno Campos. How are you? I'm great, thanks. How are you? I'm doing great. So you're the prince in the movie, the dashing prince. A dashing slash frog, yes. <laughs> slash frog. Was it humbling going from a prince to a frog? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's pretty humbling, yeah. So tell us a little bit more about your character. Uh, my character is, um, I think, a little different than, uh, than, than, than the Disney prince tradition in that he... You know, in the past, you have these perfect princes. They come at the end, and they got a lot of money, and they they uh, and they don't speak much. My character is filled with uh, some issues, and he's um, uh, really excited to be part of this 1920s jazz revolution. Um, he's got this whole uh, running away from home kind of attitude, um, and then he's grounded by this uh, young, hardworking girl, Tiana. Now, what draws him to the princess? Well, at first, nothing. <laughs> at first, he's not drawn by her at all uh, because he's used to getting his way, um, and she is not about that. And uh, you know, and his whole attitude through the movie is, "Listen, I know I'm a frog. I know I'm dripping in mucus, but I still got it." Um, and she won't have any of that. Um, and then he starts to he learns to appreciate her, and she learns to enjoy herself a bit more around him. Um, he teaches her how to dance, and she teaches him how to work. <laughs> so it's a fair trade. All right, we're here with Terrence Howard. How are you? I'm wonderful, and you? I'm doing great. We're, we're dressed alike. We have purple on. Yeah, royal colors. Royalty. All right, and so, so fitting for this film, The Princess and the Frogs, what's your, your character in the film? Well, my character, I play James, her father, who's a hard-working New Orleans cat with a lot of... Um, past life experience from his from his mother his father and you can tell that in the lessons that he teaches her that you can have your dream but your dream needs to be, you need to believe in it and the true faith of believing in it the show of your works is to work is the hard sweat blood equity that you put into accomplishing your dreams the fact that she remembers that when she becomes older you know that touches every father's heart and Princess Tiana is not like the previous princesses where she, you know, is spoiled and has no type of responsibility. She's hardworking, independent. Tell us about how that realistic depiction is so important for young girls nowadays. Well, a lot of young girls have the genetic coincidence of symmetry, which makes them beautiful. But that's a short-lived uh, experience. And if they put their faith in just having the, the outward appearance of beauty and think that that will get them through, they'll be quickly disappointed. But the heart, the amount of effort that the heart puts out, the performance that it gives in life, that's that performance that will get a standing ovation forever as long as you go at it whole sold. And what she has done and working so hard and she never gave up hope, never gave up hope no matter how hard it became. That's a lesson you learn from your parents, and that's a lesson that every child is responsible to teach to their children when they become parents. So even though she's a black princess, all little girls can be able to relate to Princess Tiana. Well, all little girls related to Snow White, you know. They need to see their own color there, but it certainly helps to feel it. How important is this that it's the first Disney black African-American princess? Well, no, we already had two African-American princesses that's not animated that's sitting in the White House right now. And um, I think this is a happy accident that this film came out around the same time. But um, I'm happy to be here in that day. Okay, we're here with Anika Noni Rose. How are you? I'm great. 
That's great. Now, we loved you in Dream Girls and talking about dreams. How wonderful is it to be the first African American Disney princess? It's amazing. And I, you know, it's it's interesting because it's wonderful to be the first African American princess. It's wonderful to be a princess. It's wonderful to be in the Disney movie in general. Um, I'm just thrilled on so many levels. And I think that the movie itself is sharing so many wonderful messages for children, but you know what, for also for adults, because one major theme in this movie is about supporting the people you love. You may not believe that they can attain their dreams, but if they do, you support them and you help to bolster them and get there. And that's a wonderful thing. Now, how was it playing a role where there's a Disney princess that's so realistic, so modern to you know what we're struggling and going through right now, currently? You know, I think that it's a very universal story in that this is always a current event. There's always somebody telling you you're not going to make it. In 1908, in 1938, in 1998, in 2008, somebody is always going to tell someone else that they're not going to make it. Um, but you can and you will. And I think that that's the wonderful thing about the way that these people tell stories is because they do tell stories that span the years, that span, that go past race, that go past even gender. Um, and that's a wonderful thing. Okay, we are here with Keith David. How are you? You know, I'm better for your asking. <laughs> well, I love your outfit. You look so nice today. Well, thank you. And you're wearing my favorite color, purple. Purple. I knew that. That's why I wore it. All right. <laughs> I appreciate it. So now tell us about your character in the movie. Oh, well, Dr. Facilier is uh, the guy that you love to hate. He's, uh, he's just, I think he's, I think he's delicious. You know, but he's a bad guy. Now you're the voice of 94.7, the smooth jazz. Is that how they got you for this role? Um, or that smooth voice. I don't know whether that had any, whether that had anything to do with it, because I think I got this job before I had the wave job. Okay. But hey, you know, it's all good. <laughs> it's all good. So how how exciting is this to have you know the first African American Disney princess movie and you being a part of it? You know how exciting that is. I want you to I mean, tell me. I mean, it's, uh, I mean, it's um, an idea whose time has come. It's a wonderful advent. It is um, something that we've longed for and waited for. It's groundbreaking. It's history making. Right. It's all of those. It's all of those wonderful things. And on top of that, it's also damn good. I mean, it's a wonderful movie. 